we will not take up much time because the doc has a lot to cover this evening and we're so excited to hear from her. So we'll do one song that will go into prayer. I'll tell you more about our presenter and then we'll get right into it. Sister Jack. Good evening, everyone. We know that whatever we're going through, God's strength is perfect. And so today, today I trust to depend on his strength and yours. His strength is perfect. So
perfect His strength is perfect Amen Okay, thank you. Thank you, Elder Perry. <laughs> thank you, Sister Jack. His strength is perfect. Thank God for his perfect strength. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Sister Sharon Alder to lead us in prayer. Sister Sharon. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, that your strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. And so we thank you for the blessings that we have received today. And as Sister Deborah comes to us, Lord, to present the, our, the, 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 presentation, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide our thoughts and will guide her thoughts, Lord, and may it be a blessing to us. May we learn and may we practice what we have learned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, thank you, sister. Thank you, sister Sharon. No, before doctor comes to us, um, if you have questions this evening, please write them in the chat. Um, if you hear something that you'd like clarification on, please put it in the chat. Someone will take it down. I will read them back to you at the appropriate time, Dr. Williams, and we will try to answer as many of your questions as possible. Before I turn over to her, let me tell you a little about who we are blessed to have in our midst this evening. Dr. Deborah E.S. Williams is a full-time medical missionary, a health lifestyle educator, and a health consultant. Previously, previously she spent 23 years working in the field of banking. Since 2012, she ventured into the field of nutrition and natural health, where she works with people who are afflicted with lifestyle diseases, teaches disease prevention through seminars, home visits, healthy cooking, and meal preparation. She also does workshops and community outreach projects. Dr. Williams is an eight years breast cancer survivor who refuse chemo and radiation because of their known ill effects and instead use adherence to God's eighth laws of health to recover from cancer. And to that we say, praise the Lord. She is a dedicated Christian and a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ocherez, Jamaica. We are so happy to have you this evening, Dr. Deborah. Thank you on behalf of the Bronx Bethany Church. I'll now turn over to you. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy, holy and blessed Sabbath, everyone. And thank you, Sister Jack, for being the instrument that pulled me over to this church in the USA to share a very important message from the kingdom of God with God's children. Let us pray. Loving Father and our God, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy and for your love. Father, we can celebrate on your holy Sabbath, the reunion with you through Jesus. We thank you for his blood and his merits and his righteousness. We thank you, Lord, that we have been redeemed 
we are your adopted children and you wish above all things that we be in good health and prosper even as our soul shall prosper father we must glorify magnify and exalt your holy name and sick people cannot glorify your name because you're the god of health and so lord as you have helped me to overcome cancer and as you have taught me lord how to help your people i come now as an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven to bring kingdom principle back to this earth through this platform thank you for the pastor and the elders and all the leaders who have organized this platform no lord speak speak lord through me let your name be glorified it's my prayer with thanksgiving in jesus name amen all right thank you sis for your introduction yes indeed in 2012 i was diagnosed with um, breast cancer my doctors told me I had to cut off the breast through chemo and radiation. And while they were telling me that if I didn't do this, I would have five years to live, I remembered this great Seventh-day Adventist health message. And I remember this great God who pulled me out of darkness and brought me into his marvelous light. And so I said to my doctor, let me go talk to God and get back to you on this thing. <laughs> and he said, talk to who? I said, Doc, let me go home and talk to God and get back to you on this thing. He said, okay, Deborah, well, you have to hurry up because it's an aggressive cancer. You know, the, 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 the fear mongering. I went home and I prayed. I said, Lord, you have come into the den of hell to take out this rebel. I am not dying from cancer. So you tell me what to do. I went home and I prayed. And I'm cutting the testimony very short. And while I was praying, the Holy Spirit made it very clear. Deborah, read the book, Ministry of Healing. Do what it says and you will be fine. With my little face to self, I said, but Lord, I've already read the book already. <laughs> the Holy Spirit says, you have read the book. You're not doing what is in the book, which is what most Seventh-day Adventists do. I said, okay, Lord, I apologize to you for giving myself cancer. I gave myself cancer, how I was eating, how I was drinking, how I was living, how I was dealing with stress. I said, Lord, I'm going to go your, your route. Open by the book and I started reading again. The next morning I went into my kitchen, opened the cupboard, looked in the cupboard and saw the cancer. I just saw the cancer. The chicken with the hormone steroids and anti cancer. The egg, hormone cancer. The fish, mercury cancer. The tin food, aluminum cancer. The cheesecake with that I used to love cheesecake, cancer. The ice cream, cancer. Don't be in the garbage. I said, Lord, the kitchen is empty. What do I do? The Lord said, no, head to the market. And I went straight to the market. And I became a Seventh-day Adventist health reformer in one night. Because I had the technical knowledge. I hadn't applied it to my life. And so after nine months of going the New Start pathway, when I went to the U.S. to do my PET scan to see the cancer was still there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When the test came back, there was no cancer in my body. That was over eight and a half years ago. And I'm still cancer free. Now in 2013, the Lord convicted me to become a medical missionary. Because my background is finance. I'm a finance consultant. I made a covenant with the Lord. I said, Lord, I am not one of those lazy Seventh-day Adventists. Who take up bench nature? I work for you. I am on the road giving out books and doing seminars. I cannot die from cancer because you said the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. I'm a worker. I'm not dying from cancer. So, Lord, heal me from this cancer. And I'm going to close the finance company and I'm going to go full time into medical missionary work. And that's what I did. In 2014, the Lord convicted me, Deborah, go back to school. Now, why did the Lord encourage me to go back to school? Because I was traveling around the Caribbean teaching the principles of health reform. But nobody now listen to me. Medical missionary, you're not a doctor. You can't tell us about changing our diet. So the Lord said, go back to school, devil. It is not you they're rejecting, it's me. So since my people need a doctor, become a doctor. <laughs> and so I went back to school. And by 2017, I finished my doctorate. And I'm now officially a naturopathic doctor, certified and fully trained um, by the International Institute of Original Medicine in Virginia. And I've been doing this now for the past three and a half years. So this afternoon, I'm gonna share with 
my brothers and sisters in New York on the topic of diabetes. No, I promised Sister Jack I was going to do hypertension, but something happened in my office, Sister Jack, this week that made me switch. Two of our brothers came for consultation. That broke my heart. Both of them, I had gone to their churches last year to do health seminars. Both of them were there when I presented the health reform message. Both of them heard me night after night after night talking about what God expects of seven Adventists. And both of them did nothing. Last week, one came in. Leg has been amputated because of diabetes. My heart broke. The other one broke my heart even more because when I went to his church every night, he was the he was the choir leader. He was the one that sang all the choruses and lead out in the song service. And he was so passionate, and I, I was admiring him every night. He sang the songs and he led the team. And Last week, he's now blind because of diabetes. And so I decided, okay, Lord, we're going to do diabetes tonight. Because as Seventh-day Adventists, we think, because we are singing songs and giving sermons and giving out books, we can disregard the health message. And God is going to just supernaturally protect us. It's not going to happen. God expects full obedience in all the areas of reform. Sabbath reform and health reform and dress reform and all the reforms. So tonight I'm going to try as best as I can within the hour I have to present to you what is causing so much diabetes. Now, I am going to share my screen, Sister Jack. I, just before I signed on, I went on the, the World Health Organization website to look at their numbers, their key facts on diabetes. So listen carefully. It says the number of people with diabetes rose from 108 million in, eight, in 1980 to 422 million in 2014. Did you guys hear the number? All right. Number two, the global prevalence of diabetes among adults over 18 years of age moved from 4.7% in 1980 to 8.5% in 2014. It says, in 2016, an estimated 1.6 million deaths were directly caused by diabetes. Another 2.2 million deaths were attributable to a high blood glucose in 2012. So I put it to you, COVID-19 now have nothing on diabetes. All of this carrying on and this fear mongering about COVID-19 can't even touch the deaths of persons who have died over the last year or two from diabetes. And I'm not even touching cancer or hypertension yet. I was focusing on diabetes. It says between 2000 and 2016, there was a 5% increase in premature mortality from diabetes. Now, my office has been open for two years here in Jamaica, and I've seen over 170 diabetic cases Persons who have been on medication for years and they're starting to lose their vision, lose their hearing, they're having kidney failure and liver failure, and they come to me at the last. And Jesus is so merciful that he will snatch them out even at the last. All right, so I'm going to share my screen with you now. Oh, sorry, before I share the screen, I want to read something, one more thing. Now, this book is called Testimonies for the Church. And this is volume seven. And I want you guys, if you have your testimonies, please pull out your volume seven and turn to page 62. The topic is called the knowledge of health principles, right? The knowledge of health principles. Now, bear in mind that volume seven of the testimonies was written in 1902. We are now in 2020. So 118 years ago, this was God's instructions to Seventh-day Adventists through Sister White. I'm going to read slowly because I want you guys to hear this as the Spirit speak to the church. We have come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. 
1902, 1902, the world is a laser house filled with victims of both physical and spiritual disease. Everywhere, people are perishing for a lack of a knowledge of the truth that have been committed to us. The members of the church are in need of an awakening that they may realize their responsibility to impart these truths. Those who have been enlightened by the truth are to be light bearers to the world. To hide our light at this time is to make a terrible mistake. The message to God's people today, 1902, but today, August 22nd, 2020, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. On every hand, we see those who have had much light and knowledge deliberately choosing evil in the place of good, making no attempt to reform. They are growing worse and worse. But the people of God are not to walk in darkness. They are to be in the light, for they are reformers. So that's the platform. And I want you guys to read the entire chapter as soon as you're able to. If you don't have the physical book, you can download it free online. Everybody has smartphone and fancy phone and fancy computer. I want to share my screen now, Sister Jack. Right, give me a thumbs up when you're seeing my screen, Sister Jack. Perfect. All right, perfect. Now, the theme is preventing and reversing type 2 diabetes with diet and lifestyle changes. I put it to you, my brothers and my sisters. Um, we have the answer. Doctors say it can't cure. I lie to my tell. We have the answer. And we serve a God who can raise Lazarus from the dead and can cure diabetes. Now, Seventh-day Adventists have a health reform message. And the message was given to us for the glory and the honor of God. I call it the greatest health message ever told. Now, long before Sister White got the health message, other persons were teaching similar things. But nobody got the full package the way God gave it to her to benefit the entire world, not just Seventh-day Adventists. So this afternoon, I say hello to our non-Adventist persons who are on the platform and our Adventist persons who are on the platform. And I have two special friends who, who are on from Jamaica. So hello to Lou and hello to Andrew. So my friends are here. Now, Jesus combined, praise the Lord, Andrew, I see you. Praise the Lord. Hi, Anne. Jesus combined the threefold ministry of teaching, preaching, and healing. We studied that in the quarterly this morning. I was reading the summary for last week. Now, as a people, we are very good at teaching and we are great at preaching, but we've forgotten the healing. Jesus spent more time healing the sick because they had to see the physical evidence that when he said, repent, because the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God come with power. So people shouldn't be walking around seven day Adventists dying from these diseases. Our God is the healer, but we're disobeying him. So we're gonna pick up back the healing component that we have dropped since Sister White left this place. Now, what is the importance of the head message? The body with the mind and its central nervous system is the only medium through which God can communicate with human beings. That is coming from Ministry of Healing, page 130. So we have to understand, the people are fighting against the health message, not understanding what is going on, you know. When God says, don't eat these things and eat these things and don't drink that and do that, it is because God understands that the blood affects the brain. And if we have poor blood, we can't think straight. And if we can't think straight, we can't reason nothing spiritually. And so the importance of health reform and keeping the body in good health is not just for us. It's that God can talk to his children on this earth through our mind. This may be the most important concept 
of the whole health and lifestyle message. Number one, this explains why Satan concentrated efforts to pollute, to defile, and to destroy both. So we're in a warfare. There is an enemy called Satan. He has had over 6,000 years to study the human body. He knows anatomy and physiology more than any doctor from any university. And Satan knows if he gets us to dump garbage in our bodies, hey, the game done. The game done, because he's winning already. So Jesus sent the health message to cut off Satan. And instead of us cooperating with Jesus, we we'll fight Jesus. And I support Satan. And I say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Number two, that is why we human beings have a sacred duty to prevent this from happening. We got to understand the warfare. And Satan is trying to take us down. He has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But praise the Lord, Jesus came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. We must always keep in mind the object of health reform. Number one, to lessen suffering and disease. That's why God gave it to us. To rescue many from physical, mental, and moral degeneracy, health reform. To bring physical and spiritual health, health reform. Prepare minds for the reception of the truth. You're there trying to witness the people and we're giving them books and we're doing Bible study and you're wondering, why aren't they receptive? Why aren't they coming? The frontal lobe block up with garbage. Oh, the blood is out. Them can't hear nothing where I say. That's why God told us to clean up the blood. The life is in the blood. The last one says, the purpose of health reform is the highest development of body, mind, and soul. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, most importantly, in case we've forgotten this, health reform is given in aid, in preparation for Christ coming back on this earth. There's going to be a time of trouble on this earth such as we have never seen. And if you can't deal with it now in strength, how are you going to manage when Sunday law pass and we start losing job and we're left and we go back into the country and climb mountain? How? You can't. We have to be in good health. No. The characteristics of the SDA health message. Bear in mind, people love to argue with me when I go to give health message. Why this? Why that? Why that? Listen to what Sister White said. She said the origin of health message. Number one, it was given by divine initiative. It was given by divine initiative. It came directly from God. So when you fight against the medical missionaries, and you fight against health men. Oh God, you fight against. And guess what happened? You can't win. You're going to lose. How do I know you're going to lose? Well, I have been in my office now as a naturopathic doctor. Because they wouldn't listen when I was a medical missionary. But because I know Dr. William Zimako, right? Now listen to this. In just two and a half years, from February 2017 to last month, I have seen over 332 cancer cases. 241 hypertension cases, 170 diabetics, 82 fibroids, 71 high cholesterol, obesity, stomach problems, sinusitis, endometriosis, lupus, acid reflux, anemia, poor circulation, constipation, glaucoma, kidney stone, migraine, cysts, thyroid problem, arthritis, abnormal bile, liver disease, HIV, menopause, kidney disease, urine problem, enlarged heart, cataract, herpes, Polycystic ovarian syndrome, polyps in the nose, yeast infection, dizziness, hernia, enlarged prostate, fatigue, erectile dysfunction, allergy problems, panic attacks, food allergies, desmoid tumors, sciatica, multiple sclerosis, insomnia, muscle spasm, dry eye, blocked arteries, mild stroke, H. pylori. The bulk of my clients are Seventh day Adventists. What's going on, people? What's going on? Why are we? We are the remnant. We are the remnant. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's our healer. With these numbers, something gone wrong. Don't you think something gone wrong, Sister White said? I have had great light from the Lord upon the subject of health reform. I did not seek this light. I did not study to obtain it. It was given to me by the Lord to give to others. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful God we serve. Thank you, Jesus, for health message. So when people will sometimes try to challenge me. Because they'll say, 
naturopathic doctors, they're not real. <laughs> it's not a conventional doctor, they're not real. You know my response when I go to platforms and doctors are there and nurses, you know what I say? Well, silver and gold I have none. But what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, go heal the diabetes. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal the hypertension. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal the cancer. I am not relying on my doctoral degree to heal no disease. I take the people to Jesus and detox them and change the food and get in some herbs and cleanse the blood and the body heal. It is Jesus who is the medical missionary here. It is Jesus who is the great physician in case we have forgotten that our God is not dead but alive. So here are the books that we have gathering dust. In fact, some of them know these books and where Seventh-day Adventists, because I've had Seventh-day Adventists coming to my office 20 years, Adventists 40 years. They've never read Councils and Health, never touched Ministry of Healing, never touched Testimonies for the Church, never heard about Temperance, never heard about the book Herbs for Health, never seen Councils and Diet and Cure. Seventh-day Adventists born and bred. But they are on medication from every doctor you can think of for every disease. We've got to, time to wake up, people. Time for reform. Time for reform. We'll talk, we'll talk about um, reformation and reformation, you know. Well, we need health reform also. It's not just, a, it's not just, a, it's not just a, the, 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 the words of God. It is health reform also. It's, it's a part of God's message. Listen to this. The health reform message given by God through Sister White. 1848 right down to 1865. She says, God has shown, listen carefully now, well, read along because you can read the screen. God has shown that health reform is as closely connected with the third angel's message as the hand with the body. There is nowhere to be found so great a cause of physical and moral degeneracy as a neglect of this important subject. Those who indulge appetite and passion and close their eyes to the light for fear they will see sinful indulgences which they are unwilling to foresee are guilty before God. So I go to churches and people will say to me, um, health reform is not salvific. So if I, whether or not I keep it, I'm still going to go to heaven. Oh, really? Really? Going to open the book. God, if, if you disobey the Lord, whether in statutes or ordinances, you are committing a sin. All right. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 17. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? You know, I get so sick and tired of hearing people say, oh, you know, her time came. Oh, she died from diabetes at the age of 25. Her time came. What? 25 years of age. Kidney failure, die, diabetes, seven day Adventist. Her time came. No such thing. Be not foolish. Do not be over wicked. Why are you dying? With? We're killing ourselves. All right. No, Hosea 4 1 to 3. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there's no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood, cut in blood. Therefore, because of these things, therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. You know what languish means? Deteriorate, fall apart. With the beasts of the field, with the fowls of the heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. So when people will come to me and say, Dr. Williams, Jesus ate fish after he was resurrected. Listen to my man. If I could find the fish that Jesus ate 2,000 odd years ago, I would have still eat it today. That fish don't exist no more. The oceans are poison. And God says, even the fish shall be taken away because of the wickedness of man on this earth. And we are told in ministry of healing, the chapter is called Flesh as Food. Stop eating fish because man has poisoned the ocean and the fish is now poisoning our bodies. All right. Now, let's look not to what can heal from different types of diseases, but rather who can heal from all diseases. Amen. We serve this great and wonderful God. Jesus 
God the Father, he loves us so much. Oh God, if you ever know how God loves us, he, he loves us so very much. It says, for thus say the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bounded up. Thou hast no healing medicine. No healing medicine. But in verse 17, our Abba Father, our source, says, for I, oh, thank you, Jesus, for I will restore health unto thee. And I, says God, will heal thee of thy wounds, say the Lord. So all we have to do is just put away, put away the foolishness and come back to our Lord. No, this is my favorite scripture. <clears throat> when I was going through cancer in 2012, the Lord gave me this scripture. And I've held on to this ever since God gave it to me way back in 2012. And I said, Lord, what do I do? The Lord Jehovah is speaking and said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healed thee. Praise the Lord. Jehovah Rapha, we have a Lord that heals his children. All right, now, that was the background. So I had to set the background so we can understand what we're dealing with here. We're not dealing with science by itself. We're not dealing with no textbook theory. We're dealing with a God who knows our bodies, who made it, and who knows how to take care of it. So what is diabetes? <clears throat> Generally, it is said diabetes is a disease that occurs when your blood glucose, also called blood sugar, is too high. Blood glucose is your main source of energy and comes from the food you eat. Insulin, a hormone made by the pancreas, helps glucose from the food to get into your cells to give you energy. So that's the general definition of diabetes. Sometimes your body doesn't make enough or any insulin, or doesn't use the insulin well. The glucose then stays in your blood and it doesn't get into your cells. And that's generally what is this diabetes is all about, right? That's diabetes. All right, now, we have two main types of diabetes. We have several types, but there are two main ones. So we have type one diabetes. Now type one diabetes is really when your immune system has attacked your pancreas and destroy the cells in the pancreas that makes the insulin. And type 1 diabetes normally affects children. But understand, the reason the immune system attacks the body is because the mothers are feeding these babies with cow's milk. The baby is in a calf. The, 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 the delicate pancreas in that baby's body cannot break down all of those proteins in the cow's milk. And many of these Tin formulas that we're giving our babies are loaded with cow's milk in there. Type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes now is when the body is making the insulin or may not be making enough insulin. But when the insulin goes to the cell, because the insulin is a key, when it goes to the cell, right, to open the, the cell, to take the glucose out of your bloodstream, guess what happened? The key hole is clogged up. It's like taking bubble gum and stuffing bubblegum into your keyhole and then you're trying to take the key to turn the lock. The, the key cannot go in there because you're stuffing with bubblegum. Well, think of diabetes the same way. The keyhole in your cell is stuffed with fat, plaque. So when the insulin comes, it's blocked. And so the insulin stays in the bloodstream, the glucose stays in the bloodstream, and diabetes is a more dangerous disease than cancer. And I, I keep telling my clients, because you can live with cancer for 40 years, 50 years, and you're fairly all right, as long as it doesn't metastasize and spread to other organs. But once you have diabetes, it slows, slowly tears you down. You start going blind. You start having circulation problem. You start having kidney problem and bladder problem. And so though you're alive, you, your quality of life becomes so poor. And that is what makes diabetes so frightening. Now, doctors say, Although diabetes has no cure, you can take steps to manage diabetes and stay healthy. I put it to you that in my eight years of being a medical missionary and my three years 
of being a naturopathic doctor, I have proven these doctors to be erroneous. Diabetes can be cured. And we have seen many cured, cured, completely cured from diabetes. I want to discuss how. Now, some of the symptoms of diabetes, we have slow healing of the wound simply because the blood sugar is so high, right? So the, the body cannot perform its process, the, the normal process of healing because of that. We have blurred vision, fungal infections, itching of the skin and the genitals, constant hunger. You're eating, eating, and you just can't hold Diabetes. Unexpected weight loss or weight gain in some cases. Diabetes, right? Frequent urination because the kidneys and the blood are being affected by the high blood sugar, right? Numbness in the hands and the feet. Diabetes. For the women, they tend to have this constant yeast infection and vaginal discharge that they keep going to the gynecologist and nothing they give them. It's diabetes. The men, erectile dysfunction. So these are the symptoms of diabetes. Now, the impact on the body, stroke, blindness, heart disease, kidney disease, neuropathy, where the, the nerves start getting damaged, start getting damaged because of the diabetes. And, and then finally, amputation. As I saw one of our brothers coming into my office last week with his leg cut off, and they're about to cut off the other one, and he's going blind. And when I said to him, were you not there when I came to your church and did the health presentation? Were you not there? Did you not hear? He heard. He was there, but he did nothing until diabetes got so bad they had to amputate the leg. Now, normal readings. So for somebody who has, doesn't have diabetes, when we do your blood sugar check, we're getting 70 to 99 mg DL, right? Which simply means milligrams per liter. And they're checking how much glucose is in the blood. That's what that means, the mg DL. So in the UK, they will use the 70 to 99. In the US, we use the 3.9 to 5.5, MMOL over L, right? Now, that's the normal reading for somebody who doesn't have diabetes. Two hours after you've had your meal, when you check your blood glucose, it should be less than 140 or 7.8. It means you don't have diabetes. Or there's a test they do called the HbA1c. And when you do that test, it is checking over a period of three months because, you know, the red blood cells, once they are formed, it takes about 120 days for the red blood cells to do their work and die. So when they do the HbA1c, it's a more accurate test to see if you are diabetic. It should be under 5.7 to say that you're not diabetic. So those are the numbers that we're looking for to ensure that we do not have diabetes. While the numbers are higher than these, then we start going now into what we call pre-diabetes and then full-blown diabetes. So the boils and the hair loss and the lesions and the blisters, constant itching of the skin, diabetes, diabetes, signal, diabetes. Diabetes is around, right? Or it's coming. Now, this is what I see a lot when I work with persons who are diabetics. It says, the cartoon says, I'm learning to manage my type 2 diabetes with insulin. So the doctor tell them, oh, you don't have to change your diet. There's no need to change your diet. Just take the insulin. Just, just take your metformin. Just take your medication. And so they think they are free to eat whatever they want. And as long as they can keep the numbers down, they're okay. But guess what happened? Kidney failure is coming. Liver failure is coming. And cancer is coming. Cancer is coming. All right. Now, in the health reformer, in 1866, Sister White said this, God has formed laws which govern our constitutions. And these laws which he has placed in our beings are divine. And for every transgression, there is a fixed up penalty, which must sooner or later be realized. The majority of diseases which the human family have been and still are suffering under, they have created by ignorance, in some cases, of their own organic laws. They seem indifferent in regard to the matter of health and were perseveringly to tear themselves to pieces. And when broken down and debilitated in body and mind, send for the doctor and drug themselves to death. 
And the funeral we hear, oh, your time had come. Oh, your time had come, nothing. We poisoning ourselves and sending ourselves to early graves. Now, let's look at some of the side effects of the medication for diabetes. Lactic acidosis is a form of metabolic acidosis that, that begins when a person overproduces or underutilizes something called lactic acid. Now, when, when we have lactic acidosis in the body, it affects the liver and it affects the kidneys, right? And so it's one of the side effects of the medication for diabetes. So if you, are, if you are on this platform and you are on medication for diabetes, just look at the, the warnings and you will see lactic acidosis on it as one of the side effects. Other side effects of the medication, we have physical weakness, kidney failure, liver disease, diarrhea, joint pains, swelling of the face, lips or tongue, gas, flatulence, excessive belching, symptoms of weakness, muscle pains, upper respiratory tract infection, chest discomfort, low blood sugar, heartburn, abdominal pains, and my brothers and my sisters, one of the worst ones, low blood level of vitamin B12. Once you are on a medication for diabetes, it affects your body's ability to make or absorb B12. Now, why is that so dangerous? It is dangerous because B12 is essential to making red blood cells. And so when you are taking the medication, it blocks your B12 absorption or your ability to make it in your gut. What's going to happen to you? Because now you're going to become anemic. Now you're going to have blood clots. Now you're going to have other problems. And it is a side effect of the medication that is causing this. When you have, if, if, to know if you have lactic acidosis in your body, here are some of the symptoms. Weakness, no matter what you eat, no matter what you do, you just always don't feel enough energy. You just feel weak in the body. Fatigue, can't concentrate, just like brain cloud. Increased breathing rate. You, you, you can't inhale and exhale normally the way you used to. You seem to be fighting harder to breathe. Increased heart rate. Mental state of change, can't focus. Nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, because there's a buildup of lactic acidosis, acid in the body, right? Some of the symptoms to look out for. Now, what is causing all this diabetes? Here it is, my brothers and my sisters. Look good at your shopping cart. The chicken with the fat, the beef with the fat, the fish fried up in a vegetable oil, the sodas, the bread with the denatured flour now, the white flour and the, or the, the genetically modified wheat, the biscuits and all of these tin things soaked in so much sodium, the, 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 the artificial, um, the white rice and the white flour. This is diabetes. Now, when I go into the supermarkets to get my toiletries, because I don't buy supermarket food, I buy market food. This is what I see in the trolleys before me. I don't see no vegetables. I don't see any fruits. All I see is tons and tons and tons of this. And every time I see it, I say, oh my God, there goes diabetes. There goes cancer. There goes high cholesterol. There goes arthritis. Oh, there goes dementia. There goes eczema. There goes poor blood circulation. There goes cramping all over the body. Oh gosh, help your people, Jesus. While we are free to choose our actions, we are not free to choose the consequences of our actions. Always reason from cause to effect. Always reason from cause to effect. Studies show a strong relationship with fat, both fat in the diet and fat in the body as a primary contributor to diabetes, right? Plus, the combination of excessive fat and sugar in the diet, diabetes. The disease is rare in countries where fat in the diet is very low and obesity is uncommon, rare, right? Now, this may surprise you. This is coming from Dr. John McDougall. I've done the studies over and over showing that fish fat is known to paralyze the actions of insulin and increase the tendency to form high blood sugar and eventually diabetes. So when God told us through Sister White 
all the way back from 1905, stop eating fish. Because God knows the human body is breaking down. So your grandmother could have eaten it and she was okay. And your great-grandmother and even your mother. But this generation, we are so weakened. Our body cannot even manage it. Not to mention, your grandmother or great-grandmother was in the field and they were very active. What are we doing nowadays? We're sitting down in offices and all we're doing is using our fingers to play on the phone and, and use computers. We are not active anymore. So we're not burning off anything. It's being stored, leading to hypertension and diabetes. Acid-forming food causing diabetes. You know, I was, when COVID hit Jamaica, I was driving around, culture is really. And I see people, everybody have a mask and they spray in their hand and sanitizing while they're driving in a long line to go into these places to buy garbage food. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> everybody have on mask, COVID, COVID everywhere. While they're dumping things in the human body to cause hypertension, cancer, and diabetes. Clog up the arteries, poison the blood. The devil has pulled one upon us, my brothers and my sisters. We are told by through Sister White, volume nine, those who have received instruction regarding the evils of the use of flesh food, the tea, and the tea here doesn't mean um, the green leaf tea, it means the black tea high in caffeine, and coffee, and rich and unhealthy food preparations, and who are determined to make a covenant with God by sacrifice, will not continue to indulge their appetite for food that they know to be unhealthy. God demands that the appetites be cleansed, and that self-denial be practiced in regard to those things which are not good. This is a work that will have to be done before his people can stand before him, a perfected people. Did you guys see that? Before we can stand before Jesus, a perfected people, we must put away the flesh food, the tea is high in caffeine, the coffee, the rich and unhealthy food preparation. That's what God told Sister White to tell his people. So we have to make a covenant, an agreement with God. And God says, I will help you, my children. I will help you. Now, all of these things I showed you, I used to love them something here. I used to eat these things like crazy until cancer hit me in 2012. And I came to my senses, repented of my sins, learned about the health message, and I have not turned back since. Not because I'm strong, not because, you know, when I drive past these places, it doesn't tantalize the most, but because I've made a covenant with God and God helps me to stay focused. Praise the Lord. What a pity, Sister White says. It is that often when the greatest self-denial should be exercised, the stomach is crowded with a mass of unhealthy food, which lies there to decompose. The affliction of the stomach affects the brain. The imprudent eater does not realize that he is disqualifying himself for giving wise counsel, disqualifying himself for laying plans for the best advancement of the work of God. But this is so. I heard, I heard a medical missionary say one day, no wonder our board meetings have so much quarrels and fights in there. Because look at the diet that these board members are eating in the house of God. He cannot discern spiritual things. And in council meetings, when he should say yea and amen, he says nay. He makes propositions that are wide off the mark. The food he has eaten has been known this brilliant power. That is coming from manuscript 93-1901, Helen G. White, not Deborah Williams. Sister White wrote that as the Holy Spirit inspired her to write it down. Now, this article came out in the Glena in Jamaica, January 14, 2018. Listen carefully. The headlines caught my attention. It said, digging graves with knives and forks. Many Jamaicans are eating themselves to death. Warns experts. And this article is a typical of what is happening in America and other parts of the world. The article says, there is more concern that Jamaicans are eating themselves into an early grain, with stats indicating that 67% of deaths in the country are linked to a poor diet. 
while <clears throat> the frightening murder rate is given prominence in the news, Professor of Public Health Nutrition at the University of Technology, Fitzroy Henry, finds that far more Jamaicans are digging their graves with their knives and their forks. Data indicate that heart diseases and hypertension account for 23% of those who end up in the morgue annually, while cancer accounts for 21%. Another 13% of the population succumb to diabetes, while 10% die from stroke. Now here's the clincher. Here's the clincher. Approximately 7% of Jamaicans die from injuries, including gunshot wounds. So here's the thing. I am not going back to Jamaica because of the crime rate. And, and, and at the crime rate, this is not the criminals killing out Jamaicans. We're killing out ourselves with the garbage food. And this is coming from a high authority. Once they collect the data from the hospitals and their clinics, and when they look at the data, oh my gosh. 67% of those who die in our country are dying from a poor diet. We gotta change it, we gotta change it. How do we prevent diabetes? Well, as I come to a close, because my hour is almost up, we call the program New Start. Easy to remember. Nutrition, a whole food plant-based diet. Exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, trust in God. You know, we are very good at nutrition, exercise, water. We might be good at sunlight. We're very poor at temperance, which is self-control, ARS, and we are very poor at trusting in God. I would say for my nine years of being a medical missionary, the number one area where we fail is the trust in God. We are quick to believe a man over God anytime. So we say when diet and lifestyle are wrong, medicine is of no use. When diet and lifestyle are correct, medicine is of no need. Now, the original Edenic diet of fruits, nuts, grains, vegetables is yet today the preferred diet of those seeking to develop optimal physical health and spiritual growth and well-being. The meat, the poultry, the fish, as well as certain dietary poultry products are increasingly undesirable and unsafe, says Sister White, why? Well, disease in the animals, the fish. Two, the chemical and radioactive contamination. And the third reason, spiritual. Animal products have a cause-effect relationship to one's spiritual experience. When we consume the, the flesh with the, the blood in it, we take on the animalist, animal nature and we start behaving so aggressive the way these animals behave. People will say to me, Dr. Williams, my grandmother had it, my great-grandmother had it, my father had it, I must have it. We say, as Seventh-day Adventists, genetics load the gun, but your lifestyle is pulling the trigger. You do not have to pull the trigger, my brothers and my sisters. Diabetes can be prevented, and if you have it, it can be cured. So let me just quickly, in two minutes, wrap up. Water consumption. Water is the best friend for a diabetic throughout the day. In the morning, as you wake up, two glasses of water. Go for your exercise, come back, two glasses of water, that's four. You have about four more, five more for the rest of the day. From your neck down, we are 75% water. From your neck up, you are 85% water. We have to consume water. But do not drink your water with your meal. 30 minutes before the meal, and then resume drinking it an hour and a half to two hours after the meal. Aloe vera is your best friend. Diabetics, talk about curing diabetes. You just take two inches of aloe vera with two inches of cactus and you blend it in the skin in coconut water, strain it off, and you drink that for seven days and watch your numbers come down. The herbs, guinea hen weed, neem, moringa, the noni, the aloe vera, the sour sap leaf, the rice bitters, the mint thistle, the guava leaf, the peri wrinkle, the tambourine leaf, the bastard cedar, mango leaf, Mango leaf tea is excellent for diabetes. Guava leaf tea brings down the blood sugar. God has given us the herbs for the healing of the nation. Turmeric is a very high anti-inflammatory, high in antioxidant. It works very well to bring the blood sugar down. Potassium water. You take six cups of water, right? Six cups of water and you 
put two red banana in the pot with six cups of water in the skin. Don't peel it. Boil it for three minutes. Turn off the stove and cool it. Drink that water throughout the day. Persons who are diabetic tend to have a problem with having potassium in their cells. But we don't want to eat the ripe banana because it's going to set the blood sugar up too high. So you make your potassium water. Now, other plant-based source of potassium, you have the kidney beans, the soybeans, the lentils, the potatoes. You have the squash, the acorn, the avocado, spinach, broccoli, etc. Right? Natural foods, high in potassium, helps to reverse the diabetes. Exercise is very important. Um, vitamin D, going out in the sun, very important. When the sun hits the skin, it converts the cholesterol under the skin to vitamin D3, essential for reversing diabetes. Rest. When you're sleeping at night, your brain makes something called melatonin. Melatonin heals and repairs the body. No sleep, you, you can't reverse the diabetes. You have to sleep at night. Eat plenty of fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, and grains, right? And so, this is how we, so these are my dishes for my diabetics. Look at these beautiful dishes. These are vegetarian dishes so that we prevent diabetes. And if you have it right now, this is how we eat to cure diabetes, right? So at another time, we will go into a little more details in terms of how to make these meals, how to put the things together, the food together for diabetes. Um, no white bread, please, of course. And I also say no brown bread because it's really enriched flour and they add some margarine to it. No white rice, as we said. Anger, please. This anger can affect diabetes. We'll talk about that another time. All right. Being overweight, if you're overweight, you can't take the weight off, right? Have to come off. And then, let me see now. So I have all more things. But here's my last slide. God, the helper of his people. Why is it that men are so unwilling to trust God who created man and who can, by a touch, a word, a look, heal all manner of disease? Who is more worthy of our confidence than the one who has made so great a sacrifice for our redemption? Exodus 15 verse 26. Our Lord, our Father, Abba, says, I am your healer. End of presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you so, so much. Whoa, a wealth of information. Now we have two questions for you. We have one comment that I found very interesting. Someone said that eating junk is slow suicide and thou shalt not kill. <laughs> I found that really interesting. Now, one of the questions that was asked, I think you have somehow touched on it because the question says, what do I eat if I decide to go the healthy way? And so you touch on that a little. Do you want to say anything on that? We just have a few more minutes. Unmute yourself, please. You're muted. All right. I did, I did speak about it, but just to repeat. Yes. Uh, uh, lots of vegetables. So if you are diabetic right now, your key friend is vegetables and peas and beans. Lots of it. Raw vegetables, steamed vegetables, peas and beans. Use the herbs, right, and the water. Keep the fruits out for now until the numbers come back down under 6 or under 110. Then we start bringing back the fruits, bringing back the fruits, bringing back the fruits. That is how you get it down safely. Okay. The other question, it's kind of unrelated, but it says, what do I do for endometriosis and allergies? All right. I'm going to just ask them to not get into other areas tonight. Let us focus on diabetes. Okay. On another platform, we'll do other diseases. But let us focus on diabetes tonight. Okay. All right. So that's the questions that we have for you. And um, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. And you have all of us, I'm sure, rethinking what we eat <laughs> and uh, and our the decisions that we make daily as it relates to our health. Dr. Williams, I know you're a busy lady. And so we thank you so much for taking time out to be with us this evening and for sharing with us um, on diabetes. You have done a wonderful presentation. You're a powerful woman of God. Oh my goodness. You have this command in your voice. When you speak, people listen. And so we thank you so much. We thank Sister Jack 
for making the connection and we thank you for saying yes to the call of God. May God bless you in your life and in your ministry. Thank you so much. As we get ready to, um, to go over into, oh, I was just told that she will be back next week. Awesome. Awesome. I, I don't know if you were told, but I got, just got a message that you will be back next week. So you will be back next week. We're happy to hear that. All right. So maybe we could go into other areas um, that we were not able to go into this afternoon. Thank you again. God bless you. We're getting ready now to transition into our program. I think we should go right into a song service. Are you ready, Sister Jack? Are you ready, Sister Jack? Will you be staying with us, Dr. Deborah? Can you stay with us? I'm staying all 